Era bela, bela, bela. That's what dreams, dreams come true. true. This is Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing, episode 24, right after their Lucky 23 of Michael Jordan behind us. That's right. And uh, I'm Filthy Phil. Here's Big Bully Bill. That's right. And we are on the show today with special guest, Matiana, local Chicago black metal band. This is Ariel's, Taylor, and... Adam. Adam. <laughs> I'm sorry. Come on, man. <laughs> so... And, uh, yeah, are we, um, what's going on, Bill? What's going on, everyone? How's everyone's day? Good. Just starting. Yeah. Right. We've somehow tricked another group of strangers uh, to come into Phil's basement. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like people will learn eventually. But in the meantime, we're here, as Phil mentioned, with Arelis. I fucked it up, didn't I? No, you said it actually yes. correctly. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, Taylor, Adam. Adam all right, I want to find out about Matiana. Did I fuck that up? No. Nice, I'm on a roll. Yeah, you get the bonus points and maybe that some yeah. star yes. stickers. Thank you. I'm the people person of the two. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so I guess let's start. What do you guys do in the band? What are your like positions? Who does what? Well, I'm the vocalist, founder, creator, do every mama band stuff okay. I guess <laughs> yes I, I, I wish my band had a mama and <laughs> then, then, then it maybe it wouldn't break up right? yeah I guess I could be a little motherly and bossy sometimes sure. but I try to be fair but yeah, mm-hmm. I usually promote and book the shows and I create all of the outfits and basically how the everything the band is now wait you create the outfits yeah do you like wear uniforms like do you have a look what does your look like <laughs> Well, uh, my outfit is, uh, it's like a, a, a bra top and has bones um, on there. So they are, everything's made out of bones. And the bottom's like a long skirt. So it's also have like hanging bones everywhere. So that's our main theme is like kind of using animal bones. Look like some sort of crazy witch barbarian cannibal looking thing up okay. there. Um, so Corpse I create all of that. Right. Yeah, and I do have a, a mic stand. It's a whole deer carcass and coyote <laughs> skull and there's like a doesn't it smell yeah the carcass yeah <laughs> yeah that that smells it, it has goat skulls in it ram skulls like barbed wire the top was actually made by a uh, chris paisano he's from Wormridge. okay is that room. your friend with the text dermy uh no that's jared okay no this guy's a drummer from this band but he does like customize weird stuff as well but i don't get bones from him the top That's part cool. he made and the bottom i kind of added my touch to it mm-hmm. where do you get your bones uh, from friends uh, i find some on oh, the street <laughs> <laughs> where do your friends Online? get their bones i don't know <laughs> you never like, thought to like, ask mostly kmart and walmart <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, in the yards, or they find it in the fields. But um, usually but I get this, them online. This elbow is making me feel not myself. Chop it off. <laughs> <again. laughs> it's like, oh, I, just, I, I make human sacrifices, and I just sure. use the bones. Oh, mm-hmm. No, I'm just kidding. You, everyone needs a hobby, right? Yeah. Who am I to judge? Yeah. No, these are all, like, online, usually. Yeah, no, like I mean, I have a friend, uh, you know, Winslow, The he, he's, um, he usually paints, but he also makes other stuff. He's a local comedian, and he just sort of, like, I don't know what the word is. There's a word for it where, where you like rake through woods, just looking for like leftover bones. And I and I've by accident like I fell over on my fucking bike on an antler before. <laughs> so <laughs> that just there it is. <laughs> that is gonna be my mic stand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. It's like, ow, I own you now. You know. So it. I, I mean, yeah, you can get them in a lot. Of, I mean, I mentioned before I was trying to hunt some coyotes to make some fucking hoodies and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was actually trying, my, my fiance was getting mad. I was trying to do it as, pro- like, cheap as possible. Yeah. And she's not going to let me skin them in front of the neighbors and stuff. And Don't <laughs> mind me, I'm <laughs> skinning wolves. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, if you ever wind up with too many coyote skulls, I think I know someone who would want them. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, usually I have a contact person. He's a um his name's Jared. He has a he's a taxidermy artist, so he usually always has bones. He has other resources. Usually like animals die and stuff naturally and so they give it to him. He cleans mm-hmm. it out and makes like art out of it or sells them kind of thing. Like these animals all die naturally for mm-hmm. the most part from that guy. Everyone else online I have no idea. But Okay. <laughs> what a fun world it is. Right? Yeah. So, and I'm the vocalist. So. Sure. And it sounds like you're the heart and soul of the band. 
the much. driving force. You do the outfits. You do all the promoting. Uh, I have to ask, what do the other deadbeats in the band do? Nothing. <laughs> Taylor doesn't do anything. Taylor, do you play an instrument? Yeah, I play guitar, and I do some of the songwriting. That's cool. And Adam plays bass? Yeah, I play bass now. I used to play guitar. I played guitar and bass on the album, like half the bass. Okay. And now I'm full-time bass. Okay. Right on. Do you guys have costumes that you wear? Yeah. Kind of. She I'm makes them. Yeah, I'm still it's like work- a vest. Yeah, I'm okay. still working on like the overall look still. But like right now I have like vests with like Bieber fur on it and like bones attached on there. So slowly I'm starting to kind of mold on their overall look, but kind of to match me in a way. But it's like not done. I'm like slowly taking my time. Sure. Are you guys both on uh, non Campos Mentis? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I mean, it's not that recent, right? Like you guys recorded together. Yeah, it was, uh, was last like a year, year ago. May. Yeah, it was. It was April, May. Yeah, last. Okay, April, yeah. I was like under the impression that this was like a brand new release. Or no. something. maybe I'm getting it mixed up with because uh, you guys are having a show recently. Yeah, it was show this coming uh, June second at Reggie's mm-hmm. Music Joint. Nice. So we're opening up for Bane. They're from Serbia. Yeah, I got that mixed up because yeah. I I do like both Banes, <laughs> but. Um, Th- there's yeah there's a i forgot where the other band is from like i think like jersey because he's like a motivational hardcore like responsibility get your shit together type <laughs> heart, you know that sounds fantastic <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> yeah. So. yeah so as far as that like we recorded last april and then the album launched digitally and i think like july and then the hard copy came out a little bit later yeah it okay. was like august ish around there who did you guys use for the hard copy? Or you know what? Pause, pause. I'm sorry. Because this shit's going to... It's all good. I'm just uh, trying to be prepared for it. Yeah, you can... Uh, whatever you... I'm good. You can... Uh, like, it's just I'm killing my foot. I'm, like, internally bleeding. I'll be fine. That right? <laughs> No, pain makes for great music, I find. This is metal. The last time we had this many mics was when we had Say Nothing, who didn't fucking matter if we heard him, you know. It's true. So, Like, he needs all of the mics. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you can pick up anything mm-hmm. when he breathes. Yeah, he breathes, farts, everything. For an episode. Like, you do all the talking, asshole. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that's a terrible idea for an episode. Let's not do that. I want to find more about Matiana. Let's... So how how long have you guys been together? What's the story? Uh, Start a little. I've been always trying to form this band since I was fourteen. So this is like sixteen years of me trying to like do a band, but things never, you know, got lineup changes. Yeah, and just like a lot of bullshit. Uh, but like five years ago, I had like a different lineup. We were Enochian Ritual, which we didn't had anything. Like a song wasn't even done within a year, so I had to like. Uh, kick them all out sure and so find new people again and then from those people uh, we finally got a show and songs together and then they kind of just left and I had to start all over it was just a lot of lineup changes but that's when I brought up a new name when I had the new newer lineup and I just stuck gotcha. with that name and how do you feel about this lineup? Do you feel good? Yeah, I think these are nice, balanced guys. Uh, we you have think so. Yeah, <laughs> for the most part. Like, we don't have a hate relationship Not or yet. anything like that. <laughs> Not yet. Thank you for your confidence. Of yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have a balance of being, like, goofy and then serious in the same time, but we get shit done. So I'm like, that's all I look for, and then everyone be respectful and, you know be there for each other too we need be go to shows together yeah trying to be like homies yeah you know, that's really create good. a bond i'm like that's what i want i want a friendship as well not just like mm-hmm. okay done like a job yeah, yeah. it's kind of everything a job and kind of a, a bond i know that within feeling all of us so it's we we not ha- easy but i i my band all of us never fucking hung out past sh- after shows like oh, we all yeah. hate each other i mean that's what i try to do try to like get yeah. us to hang out go to shows together dumb things here and there just to kind of be out there mm-hmm. sure and who is in the band that's not here with us today how many members do you have all together uh, it's five all together so nick the drummer and then our other newest guitarist uh mark is okay not here, so it's five of us is there a tension between taylor and mark because they both play the guitar <laughs> No, we hate each other. <laughs> yeah. No, Mark is uh, he's the he's the youngest, and as, as uh, June second will be his very first show to play live. Oh, that's he's awesome! Extremely talented. So Mark, um, don't fuck up. Okay. Yeah, I tell him pressure, all the time. Pressure. Yeah, I give him all the pressures to kind of fuck with him. I'm like, don't fuck up. You're gonna <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna be very nervous on stage and 
just fuck with him. But he has a lot of energy. This guy's like always fucking happy. It's very strange, but it's a nice <laughs> little balance of like, all right, he's yeah, calm down. <laughs> yeah, because we're always pissed off. So yeah, we're, uh, I'm I'm always pissed <laughs> off. I'm like, every day I'm just annoyed, and fucking stressed out as shit all the time. But then I release my anger and I'm like, all right, I'm okay now. Yeah, it yeah. is good therapy. Nick's quiet, a little shy, timid, but he has his up and down moments of mm-hmm. like, yeah, and then mm, I'm serious. So he's kind of like. On and off, but then Mark kind of brings it up. Yeah. Yeah, they probably have a little thing going on with each other, and they're like hanging out more. Yeah, what are you guys have doing a tryst. Right now? And we're just <laughs> like, yeah, we're we're here too. We, we, <laughs> want, we want to hang out too, you know. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but um, yeah, we all have a nice balance, at least friendship wise. Everything is blended well. You know, That's I'm happy. Awesome. Otherwise, I would have kicked everyone. I'm like, everyone's sure, pissing yeah. me off. Fuck off. Yeah, you're not afraid to. We, yeah. I know that I've about you. I've kicked everyone before, yeah. so I'm like, I don't need this. Yeah. So watch it, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> We're always walking on eggshells. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. bring more bo- complimentary bones. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's exactly yeah, I mean, right. I try to be as I fair. <laughs> yeah, I try to be as fair as possible and not be too much of a douche. I, mean, I know I could be sometimes. Sure. Or whatever. No. That's that's how we go forward. <laughs> and what did you say the name of the album was? I think Phil mentioned non compos mentis. So okay. it's Latin. So and what does it mean? Not not in the right mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, one of our songs is called non uh, compos mentis, and I'm sure you'll get into that subject uh, when it need be. But it's about a mental disorder. Okay. I think yeah, I listened to it. And I think I like that one the best. Then. Last Cry. I don't think that was that's, on. That's her very first song. Yeah. yeah that was I'll ever created. Ever, really? Ever, ever. Yeah. Yeah, I dig that. And then the but 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 it, I wrote I wrote it down. I like the the ritual version or Inaka ritual. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was the demo version. Yeah, so that yeah. was the original without a second guitarist and yeah. no bass line. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's what there, but it was playing the same thing as the guitar. Yeah. And now yeah. the the bass player is doing like a walking thing. If you heard in the album, go do 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 in the beginning of the song. Yeah. So I try to make the bass player stand out more, making more of that creepy kind of thing behind it, not just playing bass. Yeah. I don't know. I like that crispy. I guess you could say shitty. Sh- you know how like. Yeah. Burzum sounds. Early yeah, on. I mean that's what I was aiming for. I don't like yeah. overproduce shit. I'm like make it as shitty, dirty, and gritty as you can. Like mm-hmm. I don't care that it be clean as long as you could hear me and everyone else you could you know hear right behind me. I'm like that's all I care. But overproduced shit just sounds shitty. Yeah, we I made it worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just when we came in, it all went to shit. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah start polishing it up. But too shitty is not good you know no, you don't want to be gg allen eating your own nah, shit and not like getting that, stuff in your but bottle. you know sound <laughs> sound good dirty yeah like a, like a good dirty <laughs> so you want to be shitty but not shitty yeah basically. a very special it's a certain type of shitty yes, you yeah. don't very understand special though, shittiness. okay yeah. no I, I don't understand any of this what genre <laughs> 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 what, 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 you, what what genre does your band like belong to how would you describe your music, your sound? I mean, it is black metal, but there is other influences in there because we all have our own kind of musical style. There's melodic, there's thrash in there, there's a little bit of grindcore in there, there's a little bit of death metal, so it's a little kind of mixed in there. So, What, what would you, like, guys who are, like, top three bands like infl- to influence? I'm sure all of us have different bands. Yeah. Um, I love Emperor. I'm a huge Emperor fan. Anon Nothrock is another really big one. That's for a third one. Oof. I mean, I do like uh, Watain a lot, too, and Carpathian mm-hmm. Forest. You know, those were one of my top ones. I could keep going. I'm like, there's too many to list. But yeah. What about you guys? Uh, for my, like, writing, it's probably, like, Dissection, some Slayer, and Mayhem, or maybe like, Mayhem and Gorgoroth. I know that's four. But yeah. Adam? Um, so, like, as far as influences, or, like, probably Chi Chang from the Deftones, and Alex Webster from Cannibal Corpse and uh, <laughs> Varg. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> that. No, no, I, I, I honestly, I, th- I think it's funny, like, because um, I, 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 I like everything about Varg. I just think that it's funny how, like, people get really offended, whether you like him or you don't like him. It's yeah. like a real extreme one or the other. Yeah, you know? I, I feel it. I don't really, like, 
I could care less, honestly. I mean, like, he's he's got so much of a history that, honestly, so many different people are going to have so many different opinions on him. Yeah. I kind of try to separate the person from the artist, but then at the same time, I find myself watching his YouTube channel, like, five times a week. So. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Just can't stop watching. But, no, he's he's got a lot to say. Yeah. I from mean, what I've heard. better and for worse. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I've ever watched any of it, so, you know. I've watched a few. I mean, it was, like, a video of him teaching you how to properly sow corn and <laughs> yeah. It, so <laughs> yeah it's it's not bad it, as people make it out to be but i'm sure it touched lots of people's lives That's yeah right. yeah right it's <laughs> adam being one of them those, yeah. are, those are female seeds only and it offends me you know like <laughs> i'm sure th- i'm sure there's somebody gonna bitch about that but yeah no i, I like uh i gotta say my like top three i'd say craft and then wittain and then probably i don't know maybe like Take. Yeah, I love them. They did recognize us in their page. Nice. Oh, nice. What yeah. did they say? What? Um, because their their fucking tour were canceled, so mm-hmm. I did a uh, whole DJ thing and playing all their albums at uh, the exit. Oh, nice. Fucking nice. So I said, that um, is like, so cool. So they like got honored and kind of recognized yeah. me that I did that for them. Oh, that's I, cool. I know they couldn't come here because of Antifa and all that stuff. That that was the first fucking show that like I had tickets to and it got canceled because I mm-hmm. was so pissed. Mm-hmm. I was working in an office at the time because I'm a welder now. I mean, I've been a welder, but I had like all these jumpy little side shit that you got to do, and everybody there was like i was getting written up all the time for saying shit because everybody's like such a little bitch focus and i heard about this tacky shit and i would mention it to these other people and they're like yeah yeah that's fucked up you support i'm like dude you don't get it you know and i was so pissed i actually messaged tacky i'm like go play reggie's because they played there before yeah yeah i'm like that's the one venue where they're not little bitches and they actually <laughs> responded they're like thank you for the input or something so i think there needs to be like some i even mentioned this that somebody needs to make a list that is like anti-antifa of venues across country to play at yeah that's what happened uh horror now we're not allowed to say where they did it but they booked a secret venue and that's how <gasps> we had the yeah. show here they played that there. backyard right Oh no, they played here. Yeah, they oh, did a secret shit. venue because it was also canceled at a live wire. So, well, that was I'm, a cool show. I'm gonna add all of you guys so I can know these secrets because uh, I'm out in Schaumburg and a family man now. <laughs> so I, I have no friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I, I can't believe. And then did you hear this shit about like Migla now? Uh, MGI? Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, I'm like, uh, even even my band got shit too and kicked off a gig before. Yeah, really? I want I want to hear about it. Like, so what what's like the so as far as this next show, what would you like number it? Like, as far as how many shows? Oh, how many shows Montana's in total? Played? Yeah, Shoot. Mm, maybe six or eight. Okay, and then so like, what's have you ever had any bad experience? Like, what was the worst experience that you had? Like, because of playing <laughs> my last show. Oh yeah. no! <laughs> yeah, the music joint, which we we're gonna play again in June. Uh, we really? play we pl- we play with Abigail Williams and like Ghostbath and all these other bands, but um, yeah, I had, uh, almost fought the bartender. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> she was being fucking crazy. It was a miscommunication with like the the person in charge and giving us wristband for uh, free beers, and it was for the touring band only. But he didn't know, and then he uh. already told us, and I told him, "Are you sure we get on the money?" He's like, "Yeah." And it was not communicated with the bartender, and they thought we were just trying to get cheap beer or free beers. And oh. I was like, no. And I was just so angry. She was trying to take his wallet, and I had to jump in, and she wanted to fight me. And then none of the bands wanted to give us room for our merch, and I just needed six inches, like this much. And they were like, mm. oh, nice enough. Goes Beth did move and gave us space, and they were super nice and respectful. And I'm like, thank you. I'm like, this is all I need little bit of space yeah yeah it was just not i was angry but you're going back june 2nd and how's it gonna go this time it looks like all the bands are nice i mean they've been liking and harding our stuff i know so nice great, but you <laughs> can dedicate a song to that bitch yeah you know, if she's there yeah I, yeah I know, apparently she's still there but <laughs> and will she be giving you free beer this time around hopefully fingers crossed <laughs> if i go will she give me free beer maybe all right 
Take but I, I guess it was just a miscommunication. Everybody was just having a bad day and just uh, took it on the wrong person here. And everyone knows me. I am drama free. And I'm like, I just want my PBR. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's all. All this fighting. I just want one PBR. That's all. Like, I'm not even getting the most expensive drink. Like, one yeah. they finally gave it to me. Nice. And I got free beers from everyone else that felt bad for me. <laughs> that, there you go. I was like, you're, you're like a little pouty baby. <laughs> Man, I love a happy ending. Yeah, I mean, See? I was still angry, like, for weeks. <laughs> I but usually hold anger for no. a while. <laughs> Man. Fair but enough. it should be a good show. And I know the Blood of the Wolf are good friends of ours. They're also from here, like, Black and Duff metal band. They're really amazing guys. So I'm, like, I, I'm pretty sure they're not going to let anything slide weirdly that way either. All the other bands seem nice, too. Yeah. So it should be a better show. And I'm just going to forget about that last show. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's a funny story I mentioned to you, Bill, before, but when I saw Watain and Metro, did you did you guys go to I that? I was there. I was in the balcony. I almost fell off. <gasps> yeah. I was VIP. You know, I, when <laughs> I was, like, near that mosh pit, and I had, like, an anxiety attack because that shit was going so nuts. And then, like, also, I was trying to tape the singer, and, like, right when he saw me, he Eric. threw all the blood at me. Oh, nice <laughs> and, timing. And so... <laughs> And I think I, I think I got sick from it because it's. It, I mean, I'm, I'm not even kidding. Like I got like food poisoning, which I don't know. It's cool. So, but but the funny thing was like, after the show, you know the the tridents they have in all the videos. Yeah. They were they they had like a wagon with all the dead animals guy. And then they had a guy with a mop to mop everything up, and then they had a guy taking out the tridents. And I wanted to take a picture with them, and they're like, no no no, you can't you can't you can't. And then. Eric came out. Oh, well, no. First, the drummer came out, and I guess he's like a, just a twin drummer. And he's like, "Oh, so how did we sound? Were we good? Yeah, I I don't know about the last. He was like the jolliest guy. And then we're like, Eric, can we take a picture? Uh, whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just so goofy. Uh, character. I just remember my other bad show was the very first show we ever I ever had. It just popped in my head. It's, there's a lot of memory. Sure, tell us stuff. about it. Once you get older, you kind of. Yeah forget mm -hmm. let's open up these old wounds we yeah right um it was actually not booked at a venue it was at the fallout which is like this really crappy little warehouse do you are it's got character yeah. That, yeah. I think yeah. some people are into that you know? yeah but really i didn't i didn't i was not happy <laughs> like it's all these bunch of kids everywhere and i'm like why are we here okay did you get free beer <sighs> Uh, I was very drunk, so <laughs> somebody was giving me beers. It could. I was wasted. I was there till like 5 a.m. I don't remember much of the night. Um, and then there was no AC, so it was very hot. My guitar player broke a string on the first song, and he had no idea. So what do I do? What do I do? I'm like, go find somebody and get a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm trying to stay in character while I'm scolding him. Sure. Like, Just get off the stage. <laughs> I'm like, play whatever. Play whatever in the other strings. I'm like, get damn it. <laughs> so like, I was just awful. Was there another band that like you could have used their guitars or? Yeah, I mean I'm I'm not gonna go look for it. I'm in the middle. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. Farming, so I was like, he was an idiot. <laughs> he left. And so he was the human budget. sacrifice then. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, and I was just like, dude, I'm like, I can't figure it out for you. Like, walk out and ask somebody or play other. He just played something else, and I was just shitty all throughout because he's just playing whatever on the other. Mm -hmm three strings he had left or whatever oh. and this was your very first show yeah it was i mean we had quite a crowd but still i didn't i don't like playing shows like that it just felt like a garage yard show oh way. sure but so it was a warehouse but i wasn't very happy playing there Wh where was that I, I don't think you mentioned where was the hornet show the secret it was like far was in it was in a, a venue a, sec a secret little area but uh, like she outdoors can't or she can't yeah, say i can't say oh oh i see it secret okay. secret that but what was the address like <laughs> i yeah. don't know i actually what are the like coordinates on yeah. GPS? yes <laughs> latitude longitude yeah it was very far about an hour <laughs> and was it was that a good show was it yeah that was a good show i didn't play it but i wish <laughs> that's honestly that's the best way to get like good shows is to like look up who's coming to town and be like can i open it for you can i open it for you and that's like the best fucking feeling yeah but i don't do that no i wait yeah. i just wait i'm like everyone knows my band or me like the promoters do so i just wait i'm not a person that begs so i just like wait around to be asked 
Yeah, I mean, it's worked so far. Yeah, I mean, I just wait around. I've been, I've been asked here and there other shows, but I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it has to be worth it, man. I'm like, it take way too long to prepare, <laughs> like myself to get ready. It takes two hours because I also have all the makeup, quartz paint, my outfit to make sure everything is sitting properly and doesn't break on me. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have a, a crown headdress that I made out of coyote jaws and like animal <laughs> vertebrae. So I have like this all crown thing. Sure. I don't really wear it on stage. It's so heavy and it might fall and I move my head a lot. Mm-hmm. So I might try maybe one song or try to like rehearse it and see if it uh, will fall off. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm like all out. That's you true. should look up pictures of it. It's awesome. Yeah. Or you come to the show. Yeah, I'm all pimped out. <laughs> do, you, do you ever feud like you guys can't have as more bones than me? We need right. more. Uh, that's understood, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want that many. <laughs> it's not very comfortable walking, honestly. It's yeah. very, I have to be like, I'm very delicate. So I have to like walk very carefully. I guess it works because it kind of looks creepy. But I'm like, I actually been trying to be careful not to break anything. Because I'm so fragile. Sure. I'm getting like stabbed when I play guitar as it is. Like we got bone necklaces <laughs> and bone to <laughs> Right. What? It's a passion it's project. All yeah. metal. No, yeah, I it's right. And, and it's in Chicago. You're gonna get stabbed eventually. You know. Yeah. Either. One way or the other. I'm, let's get it out of the way. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> um, so, have you tour or like perform shows elsewhere, or are you strictly Chicago? Do you? Uh, eventually, we want to uh, play other areas. It's just nothing has been brought up to be worth it. It's all been like local from other states, which don't really fill up. So I'm like, what's the point of driving so far for like? couple people like maybe a festival maybe sure yeah. to. Uh, but right now we don't play often play like maybe once twice a year and that's it okay the rest is like songwriting and trying to just work on new shit and prepare more stuff more bone stuff <laughs> like i'm I, i'm never <laughs> done crafts. i'm probably like quarter of how i want the whole stage to look because i want to do everything i want to do lights and all of this kind of effects videos and projection stuff like i want to go all fancy yeah no that's good they have a balance of good music and entertainment like everything all imagery like ev- i've said i said this before how like when i was like first got into metal in like sixth grade it was like that was like marilyn manson's peak and it was like the music was okay but then the stage show was okay so it was like a good balance but it's like now the the music's okay and he's fat and falling off speakers so I don't know, like, it's it, th- there's no there's no good. It's good to have like that that like both sides really fucking well. You know? Yeah, so that's what I wanted to. Not just like a bunch of people playing music. Like I want actually give out a good show because I actually perform and do creepy weird stuff. Whatever the music takes me. Oh, when you mean like where on you're on stage, stage, you do creepy weird stuff. I mean, I do creepy stuff, anyways. But okay. <laughs> on, <laughs> on stage, yeah, I just. What Act is like this Well, this morning, thing. I'm not even kidding. Somebody left a, a huge shit on my front porch. Sorry, that was probably me. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good work. That was really metal. It Sorry. sent the message. Okay. Sorry, I couldn't reach the bathroom on time. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Yeah. The door was locked, you know. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, I try to just make overall everything a show, like visually and also, you know, listening to it and everything just all together blended because you want a, a good show overall not just people playing instruments people get bored like i've been in the music scene forever since i was like 14 so i've seen like what works why people leave like i've been very observant all those years of what works what doesn't like people yeah. like to be entertained mm-hmm. so like what's entertainingly creepy a bunch of bones and like crazy imagery <laughs> and like what sure, the fuck is that thing like i want people like what is that and whoa like yeah. they're just it's just like a, a museum up in there so that's what i'm trying to do i had a, like ninja turtle just fell over there <laughs> she's distracted i have a very short attention span sure. he fainted that's like oh toxic he couldn't, crusaders. He okay. couldn't take yeah. it anyway yeah, that's toxic. oh yeah. shit yeah Toxy. i can't like all i see is a green guy <laughs> he fainted <laughs> too much metal for yeah, me. Like, oh, too much. <laughs> so, what can the fans expect on June second? Like, what, what will you do? What do you guys do as a band? Like, what is the show other bones. than bones and bones. vests? Just 
Just bones? Well, just there's candles too and blood. Yeah, my okay. my mic stand has candles that I light up. Well, I have someone else light up. I actually have a fire phobia. <laughs> so, sure. Yeah. So I ask somebody else to do. It. I'm like, mm. I mean, yeah. she's crawling all over the stage and the monitors the whole time, yeah. like going. Okay. Yeah, I just like yeah. all this exorcist chick just crawling everywhere yeah. and like shoving people or grabbing people on stage. Yeah. And just like. Give it my all. I do am, uh, well, am, do, I can't speak today. I can't speak today. No, you're doing today. great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do plan to push my vocals even further for this show, so I've been working on it, and one of our newest songs we're going to be playing on that show. Two songs, but we played one new one before, but this one's a brand new one, never been recorded, never been uh, played live. So That's I have really a little cool. grindcore screech in the middle part, which I'm trying to push. Can you give us a sample? Oh, boy. I don't know. <laughs> Not to put spot. you on the spot. But <laughs> I, I don't know if I can. Your fucking mic will break. Like, no. it's, it's extremely <laughs> high. Like, it's that so was, high. Yeah, that was Say Nothing's mic. Yeah, it's, so it's so nice high to... that the studio could hear us all the way by the exit door. Like, it's that but, loud. Like, okay. I asked them, and I'm like, hey, uh, can you hear me? Like, yeah, especially <laughs> when you do that that thing with your voice. <laughs> it's loud. Okay. Like, all right, good. So right. you will see it if you go to the show. Oh, all right, okay. <laughs> all right, you won't tell us where the secret show address is. You won't sing for us. You won't tell us the bone amount. Yeah, you're very mysterious. <laughs> we don't know the bone amount. As many as we can get. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I like I like to keep the mystique and mysterious kind of persona up there. Yeah, I'm completely different. Like I'm not like this on stage. I don't even talk. No. Nope. It's, it's a really good show. I feel like I can say that objectively because before I was in the band. Tiana was one of my favorite acts to see live. He's a groupie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was at every show. So this is a dream come true for you. You right, saw yeah. the guitarist string break, and you're like, oh my god, this is their first show. I wasn't at that one. Uh, it was at the. It was like the I was at like third live one. wire, and then one at Redline Tap. It was the second one, yeah, the second show. So Redline Tap. That one was a good one. That was a good show. We had a different lineup. That's uh the guys left like a year and a half ago. All the guys left and kind of abandoned me as a group. They mm. left. You didn't kick them out. Mm -mm, they left. Aww. They 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 were, they were douchebags. Yeah. Get me started on that. <laughs> Sometimes the trash takes itself out. You know. Yeah, I mean they had a different uh, different view and things they wanted. Like they just wanted me to make profit for them in a way. That's what it felt like. Mm -hmm. I'm like I'm not here to make money for you. And it was just not a good. Well, kind speaking of, group. of making money, if I ever get you know fucked with a job, can I be the next candle lighter? Sure. Doesn't All right. Pay that well. <laughs> Doesn't pay well. <laughs> I, I might give you a boner stickers. Oh man! <laughs> uh, toss them a bone. But you'll be honored to uh, turn on the candles. People are very excited. Sometimes they'll grab someone randomly, like want to turn on the candle. Like, hey, <laughs> Turns a little schoolgirl. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Get the crowd involved. Do you guys ever get blood involved? That's fake blood. I don't use real blood. Just contaminate mm. it issues yeah because I've, yeah. <laughs> I've tried painting with cow blood and it looks like melted twix bars <laughs> so it's it doesn't get the effect and it smells like rare filet mignon yeah I don't some people might get pink eye in the yeah tub. i don't want to get anyone sick or complain yeah or yeah anything, the venue so. <laughs> mm -hmm. you'll need a mop guy yeah otherwise i would have and other than that nah just stage makeup is fine the only thing real is the bones some of them might be human who knows do you guys um have any like like i know when i uh, like like an ideal band that you like you're like we're, we're fucking there like w that you would want to play with every black metal band <laughs> out yeah. like that's my dream like play with my favorite black metal yeah. band that'd be awesome to play with like emperor or like watain and all of these huge bands so i'm like oh it's my dream like that's all i want and i'm like okay then, then i could shut up um, mm. that I, I don't I don't like playing with a bunch of local people like what do, what do you what did like all you guys think about this fucking Antifa shit and shutting down show I mean how does it I think their hearts are in the right place but I think they're getting a lot of bands under this umbrella that don't necessarily need to be there yeah um, I honest I mean I haven't researched every single band so I can't say I specifically but I think yeah they're shutting down shows for bands that aren't Nazis so I think they're kind of I'm like they had actual Nazi bands play here, and then they don't get shut down. So it's like I, don't I feel <laughs> like it's an easy target because most metal people aren't assholes in real life. 
because if they tried to shut down like some real Nazis, they'd probably hear back. But like, it's just like an easy target, and it's fucking over like just fans, you know. I think it's just childish. It's really childish. I'm pumped because I was telling Bill. Uh, so Bill and my buddy John say nothing. I'm getting married in two months. Yeah, congrats. So, thank you. And John offered. He's like, "Yo, dude, how about Amsterdam as a bachelor party?" And like, I don't really get fucked up that much. So the one thing that was on my mind is I wanted to see MGLA in Belgium. And I was, like, telling Bill, I'm like, dude, they're getting shut down, the, like, starting this week. We need to fucking wire transfer money and get tickets, you know. But I'm so I'm pumped about that. I don't know. That's a it's, lot of things to be pumped for. Yeah. I I feel like I'm going to be pretty suicidal next year when nothing's going on. <laughs> wow. That's <laughs> sad. <laughs> I'm sure Bill will miss you yeah. very much. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to talk about this? You guys could use my bones. At, you know. Sweet. Oh, that's perfect. Right? I'll make you into a mic stand. Yeah. I don't. Uh, did you get? Did you guys ever watch? Th- th- did I show you? I, I sent you that clip to my the skeleton. Oh, yeah. guy. Did you listen to that? Yeah. Did you know that that's fucking completely illegal? Did, did you guys listen to that at all? I listened to that some of it. Yeah. I How? I y- to yeah. Thing. I mean, long story short. So I d- I'm not close to my dad, but I keep in contact with him because he's in a mental institution. So they keep calling me like, yo, he got hit by a car again. He got this. So I'm like, not to be an asshole, but I'm very blunt. And the first thought that went through my head is like, you know what? I'm going to have to pay if he dies. How much is, what's the cheapest funeral? And then like, I started looking at blogs and some Marine guy is like, yo, I got my AK on the left side of the fireplace, my AR on the right side. I want my dad's skull in the middle. And I'm like, wow, I guess that's completely legal. Oh. To so we were tr- I I was trying to talk John and Bill into having him as like a puppet as the new say nothing, but he doesn't have to like put that in his will or anything. You can just take. His I skull. mean, <laughs> I, I mean, because he is like uh, has dementia. I guess I'm like the what is it called the right of or you're the heir. Yeah, yeah. No, no. What what is it called when you can't uh, make decisions for like oh like power power of attorney? Power of attorney. Yeah, power of attorney. yeah, yeah. So. I'm like, yeah, he'd be totally cool with being a puppet on my show. You know? Who wouldn't be? <laughs> yeah, right? right? Exactly. But then I'm like, you know what? Fucking, doesn't Craig Ferguson do that? <sighs> you know, it's already been done. So so now we're going to have a bunch of bones. Yep. And we'll send them your way. To help you <laughs> make hats and mic stands. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do for the drummer? Um, they, they all have, like, vest stuff. I'm still working on, like, their overall look still. So, like, I eventually want to do, like, a muddy-looking corpse paint not really like the clown panda casual look mm-hmm. which is crappy um but making them more dirty looking mm-hmm. dirty yeah <laughs> more retained instead of immortal yeah i don't like the immortal style i like really blended makeup that looks natural in a way maybe i was thinking about like mud and dirt at some point but we'll see still experimenting and plus i want them to all be cool about all that not just let me just slap this piece of mud on your face sure Let's see if it works. So, experimenting. I mean, I'm taking my time. I'm like, this is going to take me a while for everything to look as perfect as it should have. I'm a very perfectionist person, so I'm always like, eh, that doesn't work. Eh, that doesn't work. So, it's going to so, be picky, I guess. Yeah. So, as far as, like, Chicago, is there a lot of other bands that are like you guys? Uh, from here? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, oh, they Yeah, they're, I'm not, not like our look or style or sound, but there is other, like, black metal bands out there. Mm. Uh, not many of them. But I'm like, Blood of the Wolf's another one. They're black and deaf, though. So it's like a a Belfagor. It's like a Belfagor style, in a way. Yeah. So it has, like, that death metal type of vocals. But then it's, like, a mixture kind of both. So they're good. And black metal is different from death metal. How? What's the distinction? I mean, you could tell that death metal is a lot more deeper on their vocals yeah. black metal is more like higher screechers okay. uh, more blast beats you could hear them a lot in like black metal okay um death metal is very like chug and heavy it's more riffy way. less yeah. like tremolo on one chord and more like going all over the place you most likely will hear more, more solo and melodic crap in like death metal too okay. but i mean you could also hear it in black metal as well yeah, I okay. think death metal's overall more bass. Than, yeah, it's just more like heavy, very 
deeper sound than black metal is more like higher overall. every okay. distinction you make you could find exceptions though so sure really say yeah so it's however you want to interpret i guess is there, i mean i could tell <laughs> I could is there tell contention like, between like the black metal scene and the death metal scene versus like the grindcore scene in or does Chicago? everyone get along yeah Here? i haven't noticed any I mean, I've been around this scene for a while. No one has issues with anyone. I mean, there's always douchebags here and there, but it's not like, this is my group, and screw you if you're sure. into that band. And I mean, whatever. I'm cool, everyone. As long as they're not assholes. I mean, I'm cool, whoever, and whatever you want to be or like, mm -hmm. as long as you're not an asshole to me, I don't care. That's kind of surprising. Like, I don't, well, I don't know. Metal is, uh, like, very aggressive sounding. So I think the impression that myself and other stupid people have is just like, oh, these people are just angry and pissed off and Ignorant. like everybody's a bunch of fucking nerds, dude. Yeah, yeah. everybody's angry and pissed off. Yeah, it's just you either take it out on your family or on a stage. Yeah, that That's is a bit of a generalization, but I mean, like Simon and Garfunkel. I don't know. I don't know, man. I, the forefathers, the founders well, of death metal, <laughs> Paul Simon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hear Simon pulled like a Cosby s somewhere in the future. Someone's gonna find you something up, so, man. Yeah, and then yeah, tell me about it. And Garfunkel was, you know, a bystander like Takashi Six Nine. That's <laughs> yeah, but that's not death metal. Mm -hmm. No. Um, no. Yeah, you know, you take out that that energy out on stage, and that that's. I mean, I I'll be honest. Like certain days, I'll be like in the most relaxed mood. And I don't realize that, like, I have my windows open in my car blasting, like, the craziest shit in the, you know, every car's looking at me, and I'm just like, today's such a beautiful day, you know, because it's relaxing to some people. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah. yeah. It I mean, affects different people. Like, if you don't like it, I think it makes you really anxious and sure. annoyed. But if you like that kind of stuff, it's, it is relaxing. Yeah, mm. like, for people that like rap and it's relaxing, that, that rap annoys me. Like, I'm like, that's making me angry. Sure. <laughs> so you hate my NWA sweater. Uh, well, I, I didn't even know who that is. The, their names are on there. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't looking at your sweater. Yeah, yeah, I was not looking at, like, what you're wearing. Fair enough. <laughs> um, not enough bones. Yeah, not yeah, enough You're not boner, interested. Got it. Yeah, it, uh, it, I, I guess it, like, brings me into this, like, inspirational mode in my head and be like, I'm gonna fuck shit up and make things. Like, the inspirational anger comes out of me. How do, how do you guys feel about I feel like it's just fun, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm into horror movies. Adam is, too. It's kind of... Everyone always says that's the cliche, that metal is like horror movies. But it's like, it's fun. It's kind of cathartic I like to being have creepy. energetic music. I like being creepy and scary and make people feel uneasy. I'm like, that was my goal for this band. Like, I didn't want to be some stupid bimbo up there. I'm like, yeah, look at me. I'm singing. Huh, I'm a female. Huh. But I wanted to twist that and just look as fucked up as ever. And yeah, I actually found you guys because I just looked up like, um, because I'm a boring family man now, so I just <laughs> make fucking like random like just guitar riffs and I have to play them to like a drum machine, so it just sounds like, <laughs> and then just <laughs> r riffs over it, and I'm like, I wonder if there is any Chicago black metal band because I never fucking heard of anything, and then like you guys were the first thing, and I looked at just like your live show and then play like the music, I'm like, what in the fuck? This is like, if not the same, more nuttier than like that Gorgoroth DVD, you know. <laughs> that's, that's, so that's it's an honor to, for you to. We see don't that. have people crucified yet. Not no. yet. Maybe we'll get there. Uh, yeah. I guess as far as like your question for me, what I get out of it in terms of like live experience, there's not a lot of places, even you know, in the world that you can think of where you can find such concentrated dark energy and if that's something that you're into it can be you know like the the greatest adrenaline rush it's sure like it's even in a room full of people that you love but you don't know any of them yeah anyway. yeah so that's what i get out of it we're, it, we're it a familia is, yeah. basically we're familia yeah man we stick up to each other and you know hang out with each other have each other's back i'm like that's how it should be like always but you know there's always going to be conflict or people wanting to be better than you or jealous over you or baby stuff it's usually all social media i've seen that a lot of picking sides back and forth yeah that, that it's very baby stuff the nitpicking now about, yeah oh my god like you like that band they're the butter posers that make you a poser <laughs> i'm like shut the fuck up wait how did they sound what did they say 
Well, you guys are posers. <laughs> you like that other man. Me, 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 me. I love it. I'm like, it's fucking stupid. Why? I'm like, why this childish shit? Right. Like, what that's, are we? That's, five? That's 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 the benefit of being old. Is like you're not up hit up to who's posers now. I'm like, oh, I, you just play dumb. I didn't know. I don't know they're posers. Just, uh, I like them. I mean, like, yeah, I like them. Is that a <laughs> fucking problem? Are you going to call me a poser? I'm, like, I'm not going to. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah, no one says shit to me. I'm like, that's just fucking stupid. I'm not going to go follow. I'm like, that's basically what it seems like now. People are just following each other. Yeah. And it's just fucking dumb. I just don't see any point to that. I'm like, can we just all get along, drink beer, enjoy a good fucking show, and stop, like, pinpointing fingers of the yeah, guy likes that other band. Me, me, me. You that's know, what they sound like. The funny thing is that, like, the more of this, like, controversy with black metal that happens, that's just, like, makes it more popular. Like, more, you know. I'm going to like it even more. Yeah, 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 because, I mean, this is probably a bad thing to mention, but I make um, a shitload of patches. I just start, like, long story short, I had all these bands that I liked who either had shitty merch or didn't make any patches. So I'm like, fuck, I'll just make them on my own. And I kept fucking up, so I had, like, all this leftover shit. And then, like, so I started making, like, Take, for example, and that shit was going the quickest because of that of them getting shut down. And it's, I mean, it's like a reverse effect, you know? Like, we don't want people to listen to this, and it's like, people are going to like it even more. Now. It's like Kiss, Alice Cooper, Marilyn Manson, yeah. Take. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, I, mean, I know, the mo- I, I, like... I, d- I didn't even know um, Horna before uh, before that was mentioned, and now I checked them out. I'm like, yeah, I like them now. Yeah, they're, they're crazy. It's like the PMRC. <laughs> yeah, they're putting stickers on all the CDs that are bad for you, and then that's what all the kids go yeah. to buy. Oh, yeah, the like the explicit content. I mean, they're really nice. Yeah. I got a picture with the drummer. Very nice people. Like, they're nice. not seeing any issues. I'm not yeah. a person to bother people, but I'm like, whatever, and you guys are never coming again, so... Might as well, right? Yeah, and y- and you know what I don't get is like the most p- the people that I know that listen to that stuff. It's like they the biggest problem is I'm just cool with everything. I I just get it. Like it's art, and oh, you don't want to mention the Holocaust. Well, it's like I have family who are concentration camp survivors. This is art painting a picture of that shit. Like when I heard of like Angel of Death for the first time, I was like, wow. And then when I went to Concentration Camp Museum in Poland, I was like, I can picture that song going on right now, and it's fucking scary. And you need that shit. That's probably why horror is, you know, associated with it. There's no fucking good horror movies anymore. It's pretty, like, pretty, you oh, know. Oh, what? Hold on. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, well, okay, okay. have you seen the now? new Suspiria or no, no. Hereditary? I know that's Hereditary, like a really popular one. Hereditary was good. Yeah, okay. yeah. But I mean, like, most, like... Get Out? Um... What's Jordan Peele's new one? I just saw it. Us. I did not understand that goddamn movie. It's <laughs> I, I, there's I, a I bunch of good stuff coming out. I I, I I didn't dig Get Out. I thought it was just like uh, pushing an agenda or something. I don't know. I did like like there's some new new ones that are like not uh, in the mainstream. Like I, I mean, yeah, I they're they're this. deeper cuts. You got you got to you got to hunt for them. Like they're out what's there, the Martyrs? Have you seen that? The American one or the French one? The French one. Yeah, that's concept. not new, but yeah. That, stuff, that whole French, like, early 2000s, that stuff is yeah. crazy. I couldn't sit there with that. Yeah, there's a, there's a whole scene of movies like that, like Frontiers and Inside, these super violent yeah. movies. That Yeah, that stuff is crazy. It's hard to watch. I think the first one I saw was, like, of that thing. Have you ever heard of In My Skin? Yeah, but I haven't seen it. I want to. Yeah, it's, like, some uh, girl who... I guess she keeps picking at a scab and like can't f- like, like eventually I, I think, think at the I've end of the movie that. she's like a, all her limbs are cut off because she just keeps like that sounds seen, fucking awesome. Yeah, I've <laughs> seen that. <laughs> In my skin, that's. A, yeah, I think I've seen that, that before. That's French, right? I think so. Yeah. My friend showed me it, like when I was in high school. So yeah, it's pretty old. What's up with French people, man? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I should research their political situation at that time. Cause they were doing some weird stuff. Elaborate on that. Like what? Weird no, I'm stuff, just saying. Like, like all the movies that were coming from France at that time. Well, not all of them, but there was this. There were a collection of movies that were just hyper violent, gory, really disgusting movies in the early 2000s, and. I don't know why. Just something. There has to be something that explained it. 
And that's you what you're wondering? You'd think so, but like even the filmmakers themselves that made those films were like, yeah, there's no there's no real extreme horror scene here going on. It's just the way they say it, there just happen to be these super hyper violent films coming out for no reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you had to pick one horror movie, like to recommend like it's the must see, like this is why I love horror movies. Taylor, which movie would it be? House from Japan. Okay. Japanese people, man. It's another one like fuck. It's like a crazy. This <laughs> movie. Are, like, have you insane. seen it, Adam? I don't think so. House. Um, I think it came well, out I mean, in 1977. I've seen the, the Sean Cunningham one. No, no, <laughs> not the 80s one. The Japanese one. It's it was written in part by the director's daughter, who was like 10. So it's like watching a 10 year old's version of a horror movie. Okay. And they did all the effects like they were just experimenting, and they didn't really know how they're going to turn out. So it's like this surreal mis- mishmash of ideas and like it's just the most bonkers crazy horror movie i've ever seen but good it's yeah i love it it. i think a lot of people would like say it's bad because the effects are so silly but i think it's awesome okay when did it come out i think 77 okay Okay. don't quote me on that i'm so behind with movies i know (laughs) do you like horror movies though i do even as a young child i will watch very disturbing stuff and i'll just laugh at like people getting killed and stuff i was always like a weird child. <laughs> sure. I mean, different not, for different not folks. normal child. Yeah, I liked that all my dolls without heads. <laughs> and I, I like I had spawn toys. Like these were like my toys as a child. Yeah. All my coloring stuff in kindergarten were kind of disturbing too. I was always killing something. Okay. And what did the counselor say about that at school? I didn't see a counselor. <laughs> Fair enough. Like I didn't tell the teacher exactly what it was. I told my classmates. Sure. Yeah. Because I didn't want to get in trouble. Because everyone just saw me as this, like, very innocent girl that didn't do anything, straight A student. But I'm like, they don't know. Those suckers. They don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in kindergarten, I did, like, this, like, red thing. And uh, and they were like, oh, what is that? I'm like, uh, it's a leaf. It's, yeah, it's but a I, mountain. But then, like, I told my classmate, I was like, it's the teacher. I killed the teacher <laughs> in the drawing. <laughs> <laughs> I watched uh, Donnie Darko with my kid recently because yeah. I love that movie. Like, yeah, I saw that one. Like the the way it exp- like the way it shows when he goes into like his sleepwalking is like exactly what it feels like when you're about to go into a seizure. And I and, and I talked about that with Zach. He he agreed. But the next day he went to my kid went to school and he just drew a rainbow and wrote death. <laughs> <laughs> and they like automatically recommended a counselor, and he's like, "No, it's hard." And I'm like, "That's my boy." <laughs> That's right. Uh, so. Do you have that framed? <laughs> <laughs> Up on the fridge. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. No, knowing today, they probably like put it in some fucking file, you know. Yeah, I was obsessed as a child with the Chucky series and also Troll. I don't know if you guys seen that movie. I, I remember Troll. The really I bad. One. I was the second one. The the very first one with the ball and the little girl. <laughs> like that's the because they did another one that one sucked. But yeah. that one, I was obsessed with that movie. It was just like these creatures and plants, and they were so disturbing, disgusting looking. I'm like, I like that. <laughs> so I I did that for college. I did character uh, design with my arm tattoo is one of my that designs I made. That yeah, was awesome. So. I I was always into like character and creatures and dragons and dinosaurs. Like I love dinosaurs. And I'm like I always wanted to be a dinosaur when I grew up. Yeah, <laughs> it's not too late. <laughs> it's never too late. Yeah. I'm gonna apply Keep for it. Keep the dream alive. Yeah. Yes. If mm-hmm. the music team doesn't work out, <laughs> be a dinosaur. Yeah, the dinosaur <laughs> industry is booming. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, so I get, demand, hopefully I get hired. People yeah. and people will identify as a dinosaur if you you know. All right, I'm a dinosaur. I'm a fucking so dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I was really big into like. Like the real like monster movies when I was growing up, like, like the Universal Godzilla or and, okay. oh yeah, yeah. And then I got really into like the Universal monsters when I was about eight, ten years old. And I pretty much my entire life been a horror geek. And then a couple of years back, I went to Tom Savini's school out in Pittsburgh, and then I moved here. So, um, you know, I uh, really probably chose him because I'm into like the Friday the Thirteenth and Dawn of the Dead mm. and all of that shit too. So, if you had to pick one though. Like, one to be, this is the best horror movie if you the want to marry me, Maria. The Descent the shit out of me. Uh, what did? The Descent. Is that where they're in the, in the cave? Yeah, they go down to the cave. It has some of the most claustrophobic camera shots, like, mm-hmm. I've ever seen. And then right when you figure that it's just a movie about people being trapped in a cave, 
there's these fucking monsters that live in the cave and they want to eat you. Oh, Jesus. It's a fantastic movie, and it's one of the scariest films I've ever seen. A lot of people will shit on it, but I, I really dig that Really? Movie. I thought people liked that. That's awesome. Yeah. I was more people big shit on anything, People though. shit on everything. Especially if it's popular. Yeah. And yeah, that's even. what happened to those Thailand kids in that cave. Without yeah, I mean, the monsters. Basically, basically that, but without the monsters, <laughs> yeah. Man, Bro, you weren't there. How do you know there weren't monsters? True. Well... I read the internet, and everything on the internet's true. Oh, so. right. Yeah. Especially Google. Yep. Google tries to kill you. <laughs> wow. I always got troll mixed up with uh, the the troll in Ernest Scared Stupid. Oh, no. They, <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I was a kid, cause I think, but I think the movie that like scared the fuck out of me when I was a kid, the first movie was Aliens. Really? And then now I fucking love that that whole franchise. That so the troll me. in Ernest Scared Stupid is the same mold that they used to make the clowns in Killer Clowns. Oh, oh okay. Really? Yep. Seriously? Same thing. Oh. That's cool. Yeah, nothing scared me as a child. Like, I was fearless. The only thing that scared me was fire. And it still does. I have a fire for you. That was the only thing that terrified me as a kid. <laughs> I had a horrible <laughs> love for fire. Me, me and my buddy John. I'm not even kidding. Like, my my buddy John, I know him for 25 years, and like I I heard about mayhem when I was in sixth grade because my ma my mom's super foreign. She's like, you need to buy a book at the Borders, <laughs> and I saw Lords of Chaos. I'm like, oh, I want that one. Well, I got the book. <laughs> right. Got a she, book, mom. She got it for me. I I didn't even read it until high school because it was like. Who the hell? Who's Emperor? Who's Dark Throne? Yeah. <laughs> it just got like, like the cover. Oh, yeah, there's a yeah. burning church on the cover, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I just got and then, and then like I think I actually tried, like having a small fire because I was like an altar server. <laughs> but, but but then but then I'm like, oh wait a minute, I'm getting smarter. This is a church of stone. It won't burn. Yeah. Right. We'll need more gasoline so, yeah, than this. I'm just gonna leave a stupid small hole in the altar. <laughs> but yeah, I I don't know what it. To me, it's like relaxing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I've. I, I'm not gonna mention when I took. I. 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 Uh, I was gonna because my kids in like Cub Scouts, and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh hey, you want to go have a campfire? And suddenly, like it was like two months into moving in here, and he fucking got like all the neighborhood kids. So it's just me and like fucking ten kids going to the woods. All right, here's how you start a fire, guys. I'm like gasoline, I gasoline, yeah, gasoline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and throw yeah. a child I was, I was trying to be a role model <laughs> but then they started burning trash and then I'm just like well I thought this was fun when I was a kid eh, throw more fucking trash in there I guess whatever <laughs> throw another it. child in <laughs> I want to meet the parents are like oh yeah you're going into the woods to start a <laughs> yeah, fire yeah. with like like I, I Phil like, oh, yeah. the, have the, fun the, the, the most harmful thing of that whole fucking thing was I brought Oscar Myers and those are cancerous so <laughs> Yeesh. That's probably the most harf- harmful thing. Man, food for thought. Yeah, man. I yeah. think uh, I think it might be time for a quick little time break. Time for a break, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. I don't want to pollute the air with my cigarette smoke, so I'm going to have one of those. It's going to be great. <laughs> After this I mean, he's been yeah. smoking a cigar like I'm... Yeah, but uh, I'm like right next to you. I'm, I you probably know. have cancer by now. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, eating too many Oscar Myers. <laughs> we'll be right back. And a bear, 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 just what dreams come true. We're rolling. Nice. Recording. Part two of uh, episode 24. That's right. And we're here again with the, would you call yourselves up and coming, burgeoning, world famous, world famous, renowned, critically acclaimed black metal outfit, Matiana. Did I fuck that up? No. Nice. And I'm about to do a deep dive into their psyches and find out really what makes them tick. Well, all right. So um, I also write the lyrics, uh, also vocalists. So um, all these lyrics are uh, actual real stories. So it makes it even more creepy. Um, usually uh, I act out as like the first person view of the actual stories themselves. A little bit of like second person. I kind of mix it in a way. So um, your favorite song, The Last Cry. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, my that one's about my old neighbor that um, she was like a, a senior lady. So she actually um, killed her seven-month-old granddaughter with a power saw across her throat to stop her <coughs> crying. <laughs> this is on the news, so oh. you could look up that whole story. Did she stop article. crying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the whole That's lyric, the, the whole <laughs> lyric is all about um, her story. Yeah. So it usually it starts with a Monday morning. 
a child cries, there's no stop, she must die. So that's oh. what I... So then, like, I describe basically first-person view of, And like, this was your neighbor, right? My old neighbor, when I used to live there. Did you did you ever, like, anything seem off with her? Oh, no? No. Like, this is like a senior-old grandma kill her granddaughter with a power oh. saw across her throat. So these are all real stories. That's pretty fucked up. Uh, <laughs> the, I, don't, the, I don't know if I want to continue. The, no, <laughs> the, no, no, I like it. This is this is what we want. Yeah, this is what yeah, the people want. Yeah, I could want. talk about all the songs that on, on that album, if you like. Yeah. But that is the main focus, is talk about fucked up people, these real stories. Like, mm-hmm. And okay. then once you know that, then you read the lyrics, you're like, oh... <laughs> yeah, on the band camp, there's a lyric section, so you press it. I have the news article and also the lyrics. Oh, that's cool. So okay. you'll you'll kind of even feel more like at un- unease. You're like, oh, this yeah. is actually this happened. <laughs> okay, so like the bones and the carcasses are starting to make a little sense. You know, it's all kind of coming together. For yeah, me. it's just kind of bringing out like fucked up stuff, shit. Okay, what else? What else? Um, let's see. What was another song you like? Domesticated this sacrifice. Oh, domestic- that was kind of good. Is that non compass was another yeah. one, one? Yeah, and that one, Touch of Silence. Yeah, that non compass meant is about a mental disorder. Um, I'm just a suck at saying this word. Derealization is what it's called. So um, people that have this condition actually feel like they don't exist, that nothing exists, that like, and then they start freaking out and think they don't matter to anything. Like, well, like they think like they're in the matrix. Yeah, they're basically feel like nothing exists and they don't exist and feel like basically like a trapped weird world of nothing is ever existing okay kind of thing so i it's supposed to be like a very psychotic song i mm-hmm. feel nothing and i am nothing i repeat that a lot in the song and um i talk about psychosis hopelessness and kind of all of this that ties on and kind of feeling like a crazy song if you if you heard the song it's kind of all over the place mm-hmm. so it has that like kind of insanity kind of vibe to the song on the writing um and then the touch of silence that one's about this lady that um Sold a deep freezer on Craigslist, but it had her mother's remains in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did that come included? Did she charge extra? So for she <laughs> sold it, but it looked like she really didn't know what to do with the body, so she was buying the time of, oh, but don't open it. It was chained up. So that's what the story said, that it was chained up, but she was telling the seller, don't open it. I guess she was maybe trying to figure out what to do it. Supposedly she didn't kill her. The mother might have died and the daughter might have had some sort of mental thing and didn't know what to do with the body and put it in the freezer. Mm. But yeah, okay. the, and then the seller got curious and uh, opened it and found the remains. So that's what I talk about in the song. Basically that whole story. Mm-hmm. And what was the name of that song again? Touch of Silence. Touch of Silence. It's a very cold touch. Yeah, so I'm like, that song titles have to deal with what the actual music's about, not just saying a phrase from the song and make yeah, it a title. So sure. I try to make it creatively that it kind of ties on to that. Yeah. That is cool. Yeah. I never hear bands talk about stuff like that. Usually I just assume like, oh, it's like reading a scroll in Skyrim, you know. No, I like skip through it. Yeah, I try <laughs> to pick the most creepiest, disturbing stories I can find, think of, and then kind of just talk about it in the, in the songwriting, um, at least the lyric-wise. Nice. Um, you want to say anything else before I bring up the other songs? No, I was going to say Taylor said a song that was like a yeah, Domesticated Sacrifice. That's yeah. my favorite so that was What's that one about? So that one happened at my old job because I used to work at an animal shelter. So I'm like, oh. Uh, I don't know if I like where the story is going, but <laughs> let's let's do it. So uh, my manager, I wasn't there for that, but my manager explained what happened. And so she said this um, this lady came into the shelter with a with a paper bag and then she was saying that uh satan killed her cat the roman catholic witches beat the cat to death and she just kept saying that over and over and then the manager was like oh what's in the bag and it was a dead cat wrapped in plastic and lace but she refused to like give it to her but she kept just chanting that the 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 witches beat it to death over (laughs) and over so she just brought the dead cat to like show the people and to tell a story just to let them know she yeah. was just carrying it in her bag <sighs> and then she just kept saying over and over like these catholic roman witches they beat it to that satan killed her cat 
and like this is what I talk about in the song. I talk about in the beginning um, about a woman coming in t- with a bag, mm-hmm. um, and then inside was uh, that cat. And then in the middle, I talk about like her saying the chanting stuff. So Satan killed her cat. <laughs> <laughs> the white witches beat it to death. So this is on the song in the mm. middle so you'll see me like repeat that again so that's me acting like her chanting this okay. over and over and then i talked about um sacrifice and everything murder in there um just kind of creepy stuff in between on that song sure and so when you're performing are you sort of like channeling that sort of like i uh, yeah i do i kind of act like that person i do a lot of hands gestures to kind of describe the song with like my hands mm-hmm. like death or like do like a little slit throat thing with my hand so I let the kind of song flow with my whole like body and hand movements to kind of tell the story so I'm not just standing there so I'm crawling all over the place yeah. and like cocking my head in a really awkward way sure. <laughs> so I look like the exorcist up there just crawling randomly everywhere um, do you throw up? no oh. not, yet. That, not yet not yet maybe if I eat enough <laughs> <laughs> then not, oh. or drink enough get yeah. those free PBRs going yeah right um I want to tell you. Can I tell these two? No. Um, no, you can't. can't. Okay, okay, you can. Sorry. No, these two cool fucking stories I heard recently. I, I figured this would be a good episode to talk about. Um, have you heard about these mountain climbers in Mount Everest? Mm-mm. This is funny shit. Is that so? I guess I heard. I, I I heard this. I read this in an article recently where so like you know this whole climate change movement and everything. I guess. Um, I watched a movie on mountain climbing, and I guess when people go, they mark certain areas by like a stake or like something that's there that won't move, like a certain type of mineral rock that will definitely never degrade. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people from Mount Everest, they would mark the way, the path that they go by people that fell and froze there. So it's like, oh... We're, we're going, you go to take a left at dead Johnny over there, and you take a right at, you know, Sarah. And because of climate change, there's just all these bodies falling down. Oh, now. And now there's like a shitload of body cleanup underneath Mount Everest because it's all melting. And there's more bodies coming because they don't know where the fuck they're going. <laughs> so. That is awesome. That is a slippery <laughs> slope. Yeah. Uh-huh. Fuck it. Um, but and then the other thing I, I want to, so do you guys listen to Serial Killer Podcasts at all? I do. <laughs> what what's your what's your uh pick of like the top, the best one? Um you know they're all kind of the same to me. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um and I I, I got to be honest, I haven't listened to like the last like probably 2 months. Yeah, yeah. Of it. But um yeah, I don't know. I don't really have a favorite. They're all kind of the same. Yeah. I just listen to them while I do other shit, so. So, I heard this one recently and I couldn't believe that it was like a recent kill. It was like in between 2010 and now. There's this. Have you heard about this guy in Canada with a pig farm? Mm, so, I don't think so. So he, I, I, I have to mention this because like the most badass fucking thing I heard, <laughs> like insane. So this family lived in, uh, you know, Canada. Like they're not known for serial killers, and they had this rich ass millionaire family who owned farms, and when the the owners died, they had five family members where they split up. Like okay. This guy gets the grain farm. This guy gets the whatever, the cow farm. And they had a member who was, like, uh, mentally challenged. So they give him the one that's, like, the least responsibility and, like, filthiest, which was the pig farm. Aww. Because <laughs> well, it'll be the easiest to take care of. So, and they also lived in an area, like, you know, like, rural Illinois. If you want to go to a, like, fast food place, you got to drive, like, 20 miles. Yeah. So his, like, all his pork... That w- it was called like Porky's or something, was the top, it was like a town of 30,000 and everybody got their fucking food there. And he started just taking women there, putting them on a hook, and killing them there. And then, Wait, at the pig farm? Or? Yeah, at the pig farm. Okay. And one thing that made me laugh <laughs> was that he used a, so he would use a shot, uh, put a dildo on a shotgun, then put it in the woman, use it, and then fire it. But then when they, like, investigated the area, they also found his DNA on the tilt <laughs> So I thought that was really goofy. But the the thing that was fucking crazy is so when the... Wait, the thing that's crazier. Crazier, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, they were saying how he topped 
Canada's top kills for a murderer in Can- like it was like sixty, and and like most people that I tell this to, they're like sixty. That's like one day in Chicago, you know, but sixty confirmed because what happened is all these people who were like there's like a hundred sixty women missing from that area. Yeah, and. When you you know when you like slaughter a pig, they send off like the bones and all that stuff to a grinding factory to make sausages. So these people looking for their daughters probably ate their own family. I knew you were going there. So I mean, <laughs> sixty confirmed kills like the all stars of serial killers in the United States don't even really, for the most part, come close to that. They're all yeah. like low, but they just like were super like pro wrestling term over with the the press here and then this guy in canada like i've never even heard of this yeah so, yeah he had 60 fucking kills that's crazy i think the lesson that we can all learn here is don't piss off your mentally challenged family member and, by giving them the shit pig farm stay kosher don't eat that pork <laughs> yeah, or, or something like I, I would be pissed off too if i wound up with the shit pig farm like no i don't know well you can when always this Th- this was like in between 2010 and 2015. So this is like recent. Yeah, recently. That's why, and I'm like, how the fuck did he get away with it? Well, if there's crap load of torn apart pig everywhere, it's hard to like investigate an area for yeah. people there. So, because cause there was literally like, they had to like use a squeegee to push shit apart, like entrails apart and everything. But yeah, I, I thought that was the, they need to make a movie about that guy. Yeah, further reading is required by me, I think. Yeah, there you and, go. And, 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 sh- and f- the, I don't remember his name because I would just leave the podcast on loop. I mean, I could probably so. just put, like, Canadian serial killer, <laughs> pig farmer, and it'll come up. Or yeah. probably just the only result for a Canadian serial killer. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, there <laughs> the he is. Yeah, they're just too polite. One. Sure, yeah, Jethro and his pig farm. <laughs> Are you writing this down? This might make for good music. <laughs> yeah. She'll listen to it later. Yeah. Yes, I will in private. <laughs> Is it so you do it all by yourself, the songwriting? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think we're missing two songs from that album. Um it was a uh, Woman in the White Dress. That one's about Matiana, basically the Indonesian folklore that died died from stillbirth, so she's basically like a ghost witch like type. Okay. Mm-hmm. So And that's from you said in Indonesia. <coughs> Okay. It's a Indonesian folklore. Okay. So and it, and how, how did you find out about, like, the... the where, did you just get interested out of, in Indonesian folklore? I don't know. Or? No. Like, I was just looking up possible band names. So mm-hmm. I was just, like, searching other cultures, kind of folklore. Maybe there's, like, a name or something that will pop up. So I looked up, like, Greek mythology, and I'm like, nah, none of these fit. And, like folklore from like brazil like i was just like going through like each country like maybe there's a name that just pops up and then i looked up indonesia and i was like this name sounds kind of cool and then, the, and then the meaning behind it you know is, represents a woman so i'm like mm, that seems like it will fit so that's how i came up about it and i looked everywhere that name is not taken nice mm. um there is a movie named matiana though it's on youtube a that's horror nice. movie and I was like, what the hell? I'm like, it's awesome. Yeah. It looks cool. Is it good? Have you watched it? No, but it, like the trailers look awesome. So I'm like, that's that's kind of cool. So I I want to check that out and be like, I want to hit them up, whoever like, made it or whatever. Yeah. Like, hey, 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 we're in Montana. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Yeah. Whatever. Give them a CD or something. And then the last song from that album is Hypnotic Torture. So that one's about David Parker Ray. I don't know if you're familiar with nope. that serial killer. Nope. Tell us the story. It was a... Toy box machine killer or whatever. So he will kidnap his victims, um, and then um, he drugs them up really bad. So he's basically they're unconscious and tied up and stuff. And he uh, records a ten minute long narration and have them. Uh, he has that play for them. So he's describing everything he's gonna be doing to their victims. Mm. So one of them included. Um, he even lets his dogs rape his victims as well. And just describing everything he's gonna do to them, a whole ten minutes. That narration you could find, um, but I read the whole thing. It was the most disgusting, disturbing thing, especially the dog part. So I'm like, that's what I talk about in the song. And it's his voice, like it's him just saying. Like, I think uh, it's hard to find that one, but I did find his voice. But it's his actual voice. He records ten minutes of it and he plays it for his victims. And he's like, he did he's, he ha- he's not there, but he'll come back and like. Does he have a nice voice? Like, and we're moving from the Chihuahua to the Labrador. Yeah. It's going to be more painful. 
<laughs> yeah, so he tortures them so uh, really fucked up way. There's <laughs> a there's a documentary about it. And there's some that escaped and survived. Oh. So, and then they talk about their experience. I know, right? Yeah. Well, this is what I want. Sure. This is what I want. This is an easy, like, oh, goodness. Like, but yeah, all these were all real stories. And that's why I want to just kind of stick by. But they're mm-hmm. like different in their way. I don't want to just stick to like just serial killers, but it all, they're all kind of tie on different kind of events. So yeah. y- you said that uh, this album is like, uh, you wrote it, uh, you released it a year ago, right? Yeah, April, May. Are you like, how's the, pr- are you working on any new stuff? Or? Yeah, right now we have probably like three or four new ones at the moment. We which got two that are done and one that just needs lyrics and another one that's in the pipeline. Yeah, for the June second show, we are gonna play two of the new ones. Tumba Noxus was uh, is one, and then Black River Falls is uh, the brand new one. We have not played that one live nor recorded, so that one's our very last song. What are those about? So Tumba Noxus is uh, about a band that had issues with us. Um, not gonna say the band name or from where. <laughs> But yeah, so they thought that I was mocking them in a way, but I never knew who these guys were. So they had a personal issue with just me. So we couldn't play a gig because they have a problem with me. It was Smashing Pumpkins, wasn't it? Probably. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so I basically mocked them in the entire lyrics because they wanted to talk shit. So I'm like, all right, I'll just make a song out of you guys. And then you can say I'm mocking you now. Okay, would you say that's like that? happiest of mm-hmm. your songs yeah it's very like <laughs> in, 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 it is kind of like it's little little yeah, happy there's a little happy but it's like in, 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 that type of little type of music i guess sound to but it no one gets hurt no one dies or do you talk about like hurting you say no one survives yeah right? yeah i said um no strong army could break me apart no one survives oh okay so i just this kind of a statement okay. to like off gotcha yeah there's the empowering i love it yeah so there's empowering and there's a little mockery thing in the middle so they're like i guess super satanic or something like that i'm not our band is not like we don't even talk about satan at all like this is just all different type of imagery they were aiming for but they just took it on offense because they didn't like any of it i mm-hmm. guess one of the is, pus- there, is there a reason why you guys chose that or just like the the imagery like like just being non like a uh, religion or something I mean, I'm not religious. I'm not into any of that. And I, it's so many bands just yeah, use that. Out. They use yeah. that way too much, like the Hail Satan stuff. I don't like. I don't even say that. I don't say anything at all. Yeah. So I just wanted to stay away from that and just focus on completely something different and new yeah. for people to see and hear. I'm like, a lot of things has been done, and, mm-hmm. and that's one of the things that's just overdone. Like, how how many bands about hailing Satan can yeah. possibly be you you know what i actually thought of and i will this is me giving a good idea to anybody listening because there's i'm too fucking old to do <laughs> put this together but right, we'll see if it's a good idea or okay not. okay well i was thinking like yeah there's all these anti-christian satanist bands but with this shit that's going on with the churches lately the evilest shit you can do is f- be a fucking kid fucker organization so I was thinking, like, make a black metal band where you wear all matching priest outfits, all the, and all the lyrics are like stories of people getting fucking molested. You know, like that 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 would be some scary shit. I feel like I don't know, and I feel like it would get a lot of if you got good music, you mix it with the imagery, it would it would be controversial. As that fu- can work, but it would also send a message like to these people who don't want to hear about the truth of what's going on. You know, yeah. Uh, I mean, I just, my main focus to, like, disturb people. And I plan to, you know, step up the game to even more if they're not yeah. creepy or disturbed enough. Like, if they tell me that, I'm all like, well, I'm going to be more creepy next time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the more I hear that, I'm like, it just inspires me to just, like, be more fucked up. Yeah, shoot for the moon. Yeah, to the point everyone's just like, all right, this this, this is really disturbing. But in the way, I have to be careful not to be banned. So, so that mm-hmm. keeps in my head. I'm like, okay, I can't be do- doing this because I'll be banned. But I like trying to be careful in a way that you can still be creepy, disturbing, and still be okay and not get kicked out or banned from playing shows in a way. Sure. I mean, as like you don't seem like hateful. It's just spooky. Yeah. Like, yeah. 
cringy. Is that yeah. accurate? Yeah, I mean, people are fucked up, and that's what I want to sing about, how fucked up people are, how psychotic people are, and just kind of just bring it out there. Like, I'm very friendly. Yeah. <laughs> out of stage, on stage, I'm just this different, like, serious. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, out of stage, I'm just like, eh, very lively. As long as I get my free PBR. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm you usually fucking very assholes nice. remember that. The PBR. <laughs> mandatory. Yeah. Give me that fucking beer. No, but I'm usually very nice. As long as people are nice, you know, I'm nice. I'm not this stuck up, like, just stay serious the entire time. Because I've seen that with a lot of bands. They're just, like, serious on stage and serious out of stage. Like, they're just like, hello. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone in there? Right. Yeah. Like, live a little. So Black Waterfalls. That one's about uh, a black Black River Falls actually a city in Wisconsin. So a lot of fucked up shit happened there with like murders, suicides, children being burned and buried alive and what? Yeah, look. by the same person or no just? different different like just the entire city. All that shit went on with different type of families and people and not the same person. Are you guys gonna play there? Well, no. Uh, no. Maybe they'll invite us now. May- maybe, yeah. maybe. But you yeah, need to get like a tourist shirt, you know, a black river waterfall. <laughs> yeah, so that's what uh, that's what it's called. But I'm like, yeah, look that up, and they're really disturbing stories of everything that happened in that city back in the day. And the city is called Black River Falls. Really, it's called Black River Falls. Mm-hmm. That I feel like when you name your town that, like you're just like, all right, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of people buried alive yeah, here. Yeah, there were a, a lot, lot of, of depressing <laughs> shit, suicidal, self-mutilation, murders, raped, uh, buried alive. It was like a lot of fucked up shit happened in that city. And I was like, oh, this is... Was it like, what, low income and people pissed? I don't know. I think it's that city's cursed or something. That's what it looked like because everyone was just like mentally crazy somehow. Even burying it's people that alive. Water. Yeah. And there's a... Uh, well, there's what year? This was w- well in the past. Yeah, like 19... Oh, okay. 1900s ish maybe a little earlier later but it was still, a long but time ago that's fucked up is it still a town like do people it's still a city who's but gonna move there i i don't think a lot of people know that history <laughs> sure. yeah, they don't put it on their city website no, like, yeah like You're the visitor center someone. yeah i was like searching and shit and that article pop up and i'm like what the f- yeah so uh, this lady uh, was buried alive and she literally like bit her fingers off from frustration to trying to fucking get out of where she was buried. Uh-huh. And then maggots were eating her alive. And it's an interesting kind of story. So that's what I sing about. That's the song that I actually do that insanity. Oh, yeah? Like the new... the. <coughs> what it, how's it? No, I'm not going <laughs> to... I'm sorry. You have that's to. Fine. Either go to the show. <laughs> All right. June 2nd. Bill, you try and do it. I don't, I don't even know what she's trying to get at. I... Mm-hmm. Just go, ah. Ah. <laughs> like, I'm not even close. Uh, I'll work on it. I'll have it ready in time for the show. And you'll know. You'll hear me. Like, there, there's Bill's yeah, right? screech. Yeah, there he is. Um, if you hear that voice in the crowd, I'd be like, this guy's fucking here. Yeah. <laughs> and the little Mexican guy's going to be there shouting satanico. <laughs> and, oh, everyone's going to be there. Num- number one fan. We're going we're gonna to put uh, one of those stickers on Ross's mouth so he doesn't Shit. piss off anybody. <laughs> here, you'll be yeah. safe with this on your mouth. Right? Ross yeah. will be there to shout racist things. Oh, it's going to be a good time. Yeah. Our six songs were uh, made from the previous um, members, so they've been tweaked and changed and worked on. And mm-hmm. everyone put their little touch here and there, so Taylor kind of just remade and remodeled it like Plato, and then adam put a little bit more of his input mark two he put more like metal- melodic and solos into the songs now so mm-hmm. they sound different from the album now so maybe at some point we'll re-release it okay because it's been kind of more tweaked yeah so from start to finish how does a song to come together like does it depend on the song like taylor do you come up with a riff and it's like oh this is kind of neat let's use this or do you hear like a fucked up story and it's like i want to write about this and then like how, how uh, I think it's kind of both. Like right now, I, I typically like kind of get a collection of riffs together and have a song that's more or less complete, and then I bring it to the band and we tweak it, and Arellis puts lyrics to it. I know she's got a bunch of ideas just like bouncing around her head at any given time. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to know what's in there. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of do. Like, yeah, I usually wait till the whole song's completed, top to finish, everything done, and then like I listen to it. Um, I scribble. And, all my papers so i mm-hmm. write slashes where i'm gonna do like breaks and then i do little squiggly lines i'm like okay this is where i'm gonna write lyrics 
So I draw. And then, like, uh, I do a rough draft of my idea I want. And then I start playing around with the words and patterns. She has, like, her own musical notation. Yeah, Yeah, I I have a... Blueprints, guys. The squiggly up arrow means I'm screaming the fuck really high. Mm. And then the squiggly down, I'm doing a really (laughs) deep low. And then I put, like, little drum solo just to give me ideas. Second riff, I put it in parentheses. So so I know, Mm. like, okay... This riff plays twice, and this is when I sing. I have arrows everywhere. Like, my whole thing is well, drawn up. Well, if you had up. coffee today, don't, don't write lyrics, because everything <laughs> is going to be squiggly. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm ready for the new lyrics. Right, squiggle up, squiggle up, squiggle up, squiggle up. Not enough squigglies. Underline, underline, underline. Uh, <laughs> so that's me. And then, then the slashes mean, like, um, singing that word. Little dots mean, like, semi-pause, and then I sing to the other one. I'm like stupid shit that I do to remind myself because if I just write stuff I'm like "Mm." so this helps me memorize the songs better structure nice what kind of uh I'm just curious what kind of gear do you guys play what guitar pedals no (laughs) none no I've got uh, a Dean Vendetta guitar which is like a really cheap guitar I come from a punk background so I'm not like super into gear I was like if it plays I'm good with it and then like what the distortion that comes with the amp or um, I have a Fangs distortion pedal, and then I have a Line 6 amp okay. head. What about Adam? Um, I got a bunch of stuff, because I used to play guitar, too, so I play ESP guitar. Um, and I have I have a Dean that's pretty much just like his, but both of my guitars are 7 strings. Okay. Um, for my guitar amp at home, like, pretty much when I'm writing at home, I'll just, like, smoke a bowl or something in my bedroom and just jam until something comes out, you know? Yeah. Um, so I have... You know, to play at home, I have just like a Line Six Spider amp for for guitar, and then my bass that I have is sort of like a it's like this weird modified Fender jazz bass that I bought online. It's like honestly really shitty. And I had to, I, I had to fix it up to get it Wait, to play is it really good well. Shitty or is it no? Shitty it's, it's like legit shitty. Oh. <laughs> and uh, then kind of the same thing. I get prefer ESP basses, so I don't I don't play any pedals for bass. I'm okay. equipment and stupid. Like, all I do is scream in the mic. Yeah. I have a, a, a sure mic, and that's all I know. I don't know a model. I don't know. It just works. Mm-hmm. Is it plugged in? Okay, it, cool. It's, Let's it's rock. Plugged in, and and then I see the PA. I'm like, what the fuck are these fucking things? <laughs> I'm like, all right. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, you guys hear me? All right. I think I did it right. And there's feedback. I'm like, what do I do? And I just, like, press this down. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I that's not my focus. I'm just equipment stupid. Do you guys have like a favorite place to play in Chicago? We uh, we just uh, rent hourly at Knox whenever we need a jam. So they have already a, a whole. At Knox? Yeah, Knox Studios. Oh, okay. For rehearsal. Yeah, so it's a studio by. No, no, I mean like a live show. Oh, for, for yeah, like, like a, a favorite home. spot? Yeah, yeah. We haven't played many big venues yet. So it's been like just like Livewire, Reggie's Music Joint, pretty much it, but. But, that, but those are like the best spots. I feel like that's not the big stage. I do want a bigger stage. Yeah, like we're almost there. We're at the like the smaller. What's bar what's like venue. a stage that you want to play? I, I really want to play like the Reggie's big stage. Oh, the, yeah, the Rock Club. Yeah, and like all the other bigger venues like Metro and uh, Concord, Aragon, mm-hmm. like all these other cool stages. Vic, House of Blues. You maybe? definitely don't want to go bigger than that, though. Yeah, uh, arena. I fucking hate <laughs> arena shows. <laughs> Ross is Ross called me yesterday trying to brag about he went to see Misfits, Power Trip, Venom, at Allstate. I'm like, dude. The, like, like he showed me the the video, and like, you guys ever been to a hockey game there? Mm-mm. No. Okay. <laughs> well, well, well. I mean, have you ever been in the, like wrestling there yeah, or anything? Yeah, I've, I've seen it. So picture like the general floor, mm-hmm. and picture if you took like forty people and cramped them into one side. That's what it looked like because he, he, he got, like, tickets for the front row of the first seating, and then it's just empty, and then 40 people in front. It's That's like, awkward. Yeah, it was so – I'm like, dude, why didn't you fucking jump over the railing? Like, I don't know. I just – I don't like arena – like, we saw Slayer's farewell thing at uh, – was it Tinley? Yeah, the Tinley Park Hollywood mm-hmm. Casino. Yeah, yeah, that shit – I don't know. I hate fucking big shows like that. We were just talking about that. Yeah, that's like you're, you're so far away, you can barely see what's going on. There's just too many people. The Misfits are literally my favorite band, and I didn't even consider seeing them. Yeah, like, yeah. It was a stacked lineup, but I wasn't going to endure that. I don't know why why they didn't just do, like, Reggie's or something, like, four shows, you know? 
And mm-hmm. That would have been awesome. I, yeah. I did see them at Riot Fest a few years ago, though. Okay. So I kind of got my fill. It would be cool to play a festival. Like, that would be like reaching out yeah. different people, not the same people we see all the freaking time mm-hmm. at our shows, because I kind of know already everyone. This is why we don't play often, because the more they see you, the more they're less likely to like, mm, want to see you. Cause, mm-hmm, like, we yeah. saw you a week ago, or we saw you a month ago. So, uh, like, giving that, like, hype of, like, crap, we have to see you now, or we got to wait another fucking year. Mm-hmm, yeah. And I always change something. Like, my makeup's always different. Like, who knows what the fuck I'm going to be doing next. Have but you ever thought of playing, or do you want to play out of state for shows like that, or not? I, I do want to. It's just, uh, you know, it needs to be, like, a worth it show that probably be decently crowded. We don't want to just go in this, like, 10 people there kind of thing. Right, just for the sake of playing I, Idaho. I mean, I take a long time to get ready. <laughs> it's just, like, wouldn't be For the sake of playing Black it. River. And I'm sure, <laughs> like, traveling and money and uh, everything else has to be involved as well. But if mm-hmm. it's, like, a really big band, it's going to be pretty crowded. I think they'll be worth the trip, honestly. But I haven't been asked yet. It's all been, like, locally stuff. But mm-hmm. I'm like, mm, nah. <laughs> Okay, so what are the next steps? What do you guys have up your sleeves? You have that show on the second. You are working on songs, yeah, potentially so, re-releasing. Uh, well, it'll probably be down in the future, but we are want to record our second album and have that released for sure. Maybe this Any year, maybe next year. Any about that? Names? No. Uh, like the songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so yeah. Black River Falls and Tomb of are. Yeah, two. we're gonna sing that on. Um, do you have an second. album name? Not yet. Not yet. So I'm waiting for. Um, more songs and me to write more lyrics to and see what I feel to tie it up all together. But it's all going to be kind of the main kind of focusy mm-hmm. type of theme, I guess you can say. Yeah, I think realistically with the amount of songs that we have right now and the amount of time we put into the songs, probably finish writing the new album sometime in the fall and maybe record it like in the winter time. Yeah, yeah so it might be it's released reasonable. next year. I mean, I these yeah. guys work they're always on their a game so they're like always have fucking so i'm behind i'm the one I'm like fuck you write lyrics <laughs> so i'm just waiting to after the show so i could concentrate because i'm just like the show the show the show i still gotta make shit i gotta fix my mic stand so it won't fall over uh, it caught on fire the last show oh no <laughs> it was fine though i almost caught my hair on fire i was like oh gosh I guess uh, that's I, metal. It's metal, but the candle was very short, and so like the fire caught on the actual like the holder, so it caught on fire there. And I looked at him like, "We have one more song. We should be good." I was looking at it. <laughs> I was looking at it, and I was like, "Yeah, it, it survived." But I blew it out instantly when uh, when we finished the song. Yeah, but that could have been caught on fire completely. Were you having like a heart? Or heart attack? Yeah. You don't really care for fire. Uh, yeah, and I was terrified. I was just like, fuck, should I blow it out? Did like, the scream get like a different pitch because of the fear? I forgot what the last song was. Yeah, I was like looking at it so much and I was anxious. <laughs> I was ready to pull that, like <laughs> blow off the candle if anything goes wrong. So I was looking look, at it. That would look really scary. Like if you're phobia for fire. Well, and then, like, well I'm freaking out so cry. nobody, nobody <laughs> see. Because I, I do this a lot on stage, but this was like a Fuck, I'm fine. This shit's on fire. So this was not actual uh, stage act. It was me freaking out up there, but no one could tell. That And that's all that matters. So that worked. And I was just like, yeah, I was just like going around. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, I got one more song. You should be okay. And I was just I, looking uh, at it. I, my first show that I ever went, I l- lied to my ma when I was in fifth or sixth grade. Um, Black Sabbath was supposed to play their last show ever at OzFest. And I, I'm like, yeah, mom, come on, it's classic rock. That's gonna be great. She didn't know about, you know, Pantera and Slipknot and all these other. And that was the fucking year that Pantera, like the whole Tinley grass area, had a huge garbage fire pit. So, so she's like, I'm never fucking taking you to a show again. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then, and so I asked my uncle, who's a stoner, and he ended up falling asleep at Megadeth. So. Damn. Yeah, I, I, I'm like, dude, what, the, was, what are you smoking, it man? It was that good, huh? Yeah. So, any shows that you guys are excited about coming up? Not Matiana, but I was gonna say, do do you ever get that feeling? How you're saying, like, gotta write more lyrics? Do you ever get that feeling when you go to shows? You're like, fuck, I could play that shit so much better. I want to go practice now, you know? Uh, well, when I look at shows, I get like hump, like hyped up. I'm like, yeah, fucking play. I want to play right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, um, I'm gonna see Dark Funeral with Belfagor coming up. So I'm really big Dark Funeral fan and Belfagor too. I hung out with them years ago. 
I was like 17. I was so little. <laughs> yeah, I was backstage like this very shy person. I was playing like tag and hide and seek with half of the bem- members. <laughs> <laughs> and I took on the Metal Haven when that used to exist, uh, the actual like yeah, record see, and, store. And Antifa doesn't hear about these hide and seek with the bands. You know, they don't hear about these stories. I was not expecting that. <laughs> the old drummer and then their <laughs> bass player. I was like, these guys are fucking playful. <laughs> yeah, I was the the show with uh, Rod and Cries, Immolation, Over Sephira, Belfagor show. So I was hanging backstage under age and very, very shy and awkward. So I'm like, so, you guys play metal? <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep, tag and metal. Yeah, so I have like plenty of pictures. I had a blast. I was not uh, expecting to uh, be back there. Some random dude messaged me, and I was like, who are you? He's like, you want to be backstage? I'm like... I'm definitely not from Belfagor. I, I'm all like, <laughs> no. I, I was like, like, who are you? Why are you inviting yeah. me? I was just like, fuck it. If I die, I die. So, so, yeah, I guess he was like... Um, he does interviews for bands, and he usually gets random people to like do interviews. So I got lucky; he wasn't like an actual creep. Like, nice. This is like trap or something. Yeah. So I was just like scared, but I was like, "Fuck it." I don't. I don't <laughs> even know because, you know, I'm I'm not a chicken. I don't see it a lot. But is is there a shitload of creeps in like the metal scene? As much as I really. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Probably it's everywhere. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I put them on blast all the time, but yeah. They're so you got to be like, if you're gonna it's creep funny. me out, I'm gonna be creepier, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so pretty much. But there, there's a lot of creepers in any scene, honestly. But yeah. what can yeah. you do? Just bury them all. That's <laughs> That's I don't right. know. I, I mean, I honestly don't know. Because when I think of shit like fucking, I don't know, Coachella or Lollapalooza, I just assume, like, bro rape fest, you know? And then, like, when I go to metal shows, I mean, there's just, I mean, people get violent. People get in, but I don't really see, I don't know. I think women's are a lot more you know, Target, it's really rare for a woman to be a creep on a guy. Like, it's not seen wrong, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm saying I just feel like it's less, like, for, uh, I don't know, like, metal and punk communities are a lot more... It's, it's sort of like the same thing as, like, when you see a fucking person fall in a mosh pit, you know who's, like, you're in good hands when people pick you up, you know? Mm, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think with the metal scene, it's more the guys that, like leer at them in 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 public and then message in private at home they don't yeah. have again yeah. the metal scene is full of fucking nerds so they're not actually going to have the balls to go they're, up and they're not speak social. to a woman face to face they have to do it on comfort of face yeah they're not <laughs> social creatures if they are they're wary like i've had a few that like hey and i'm like who the fuck are you like, there's I, plenty of cool people too i just want to throw that out there i'm not saying everybody in the metal scene is fucking weird but no. yeah, yeah, yeah. you got the tiny it's little. it's every yeah yeah yeah, the tiny guys, little weirdos. Have you guys heard of, because, I don't know why I just thought of this. Have you heard of, um? I don't know if it was, like, I fucking, I'm going to totally get this wrong for all the fact checkers, because we're such a huge show. No, but uh, I don't know if it was, like, Wookie Foot or Jungle Rat. It wasn't Wookie Foot. Do you know Jungle Rat? Yeah. yeah. Did you I'm hear about that them. guy who got, like. Yeah, Wookie. Yeah, with yeah. a screwdriver to the head? Yeah, I have uh, friends that are friends with that guy. Wait, let's back up. What? Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know the whole story, but yeah, they do a, a Wook Fest thing, so all the friends they're friends with him yeah. gather. So that's I'm, why I thought I'm Wookie. friends with yeah. all of his friends, but I never knew him personally. I've seen him a few times. Yeah, I was uh, his best friend or something. I don't want to talk too much about it because a lot of people. Okay, yeah. Sure. No, that that's cool. And I'm sure it's a very touchy subject, but yeah, that that happened. Yeah, no, that, that was crazy just because I knew like people from like uh, Ian's group of, like that knew this band. But we're not talking about it. So yeah, it's all good. yeah, I'm friends with that band and friends with everyone else that was like close with him too. So I think I only spoke to him once outside a show. Yeah, I've, uh, I've seen him around, but I didn't know him personally. But yeah. I heard he was his good guy, sweet, awesome dude. Yeah. How about you guys? Do you guys have a uh, best show you gone to or anything that coming up that you're to. looking forward to? Yeah. Nun Slaughter's coming. So I'm going to see them probably. Where's Nunslaughter, you said? Yeah. Metal? Yeah. They're like a death metal band. Yeah, in an old school style. Okay. You know, I don't. I think they're playing Reggie's, but don't quote me on that. I just have it in my calendar, Nunslaughter. So nice. I love I'll that name. Them. It's Yeah. And that like sums up the band perfectly, too. They yeah. have a song called Raid the Convent. <laughs> <laughs> That's their jam. When I, when I saw the name first time... I, I thought it was nun, nuns. Nuns laughter. Yeah, yeah, that's what everyone says. But yeah, I think they had a logo that put them 
to separate words, so that's <laughs> yeah. kind of fixed. Mm. Yeah. They put a squiggly line with an arrow. Down. Yeah, they have a dash now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Adam? Yeah, so for me, uh, also the Belfagor Dark Funeral Show, I'll be at that. It's on uh, for my wife and I's anniversary. So shout outs <laughs> to my wife, Maria. And um, then Perturbator is playing at Dahlia Hall, and Sidewalks and Skeletons will be playing at uh, the Underground Lounge. I listen to a lot of like Reto Wave and horror synth music. I actually listen to probably a lot more of that than black metal, to be honest with you. But <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, Wait, so I'll be in all of those. Various influences. Okay. Yeah. Wait, what were the bands? Skeletons and Sidewalks? It, yeah, Sidewalks and Skeletons. They're like a, a witch house band. Okay. And uh, Perturbator. So like Crystal Castles or Grimes? Is that the mm, same thing? I don't know. No, I would say more like... Uh, you know, I, it, there's like... There's so mu- many different like witch house bands and they all have <laughs> like these weird fucking names with like... Um, like ASCII symbols, like they're not actually they're like symbols instead of letters and oh stuff. God. So I don't really know a lot of witch house band names, but I always go to the um, uh, Black Magic Chicago events that are held at the Underground Lounge because they always have like fi- like fucking awesome music and really cool lighting and stuff like that. So uh, the other one was Perturbator and Ghosts. They'll be playing at Thalia Hall. It's like a like a retro wave techno type band. It's good and, stuff. And will you say it one more time? Perturbator. Perturbator? Yeah, you know, like when you're perturbed. Like perturbed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. But God. also with the Terminator. So yeah. Per- you said on a sentence? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, country <laughs> of origin? <laughs> um, Perturbator, I think, is not from the United States. I want to say like France or something. I don't fucking know, actually. Okay. Um, sidewalks and Skeletons, they'd be, from, they'd be from the United States. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. And then Ghost, I think, is from the United States. Ghost, like ghost. Not ghost. Yeah, no, it's G O S T. They're like gotcha. it's another techno like retro okay. band. Yeah. Gotcha. Not ghost. Yeah, not no. not ghost. I, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't I don't fuck with ghost. That well, there's ghost and then there's ghost now. Yeah, yeah. I, I learned so much that. Uh, so thank you guys for, thank you guys for being on the show. Yeah, I'm, thank you. I'm, I'm broadening my horizons. I'm learning about black metal. Are you are you gonna go home and like put coursing and like wear all these animal bones and be like yes. Uh, no, I'm Can probably go home and watch Lords of Chaos. <laughs> probably gonna Have go meet it? my cousins. Yes. Good, <laughs> I liked it. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was good. That was surprised. Mm. <laughs> you were surprised. <laughs> like, eh. Yeah, well, I heard that it was gonna be terrible, but I was like, yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm I, not, it's not gonna be a, my favorite movie on any list, but I thought it was. I like the gore and the chocolate milk. That is all I liked. Uh, what, what, what did you not like? I don't know. I feel like they should have focused more on overall the scene, not just mayhem. Like they should have kind of brought up all these other bands that also were around that. Yeah, yeah. Era. Like I'm, I feel like a. I could see that. I feel like a chick flick in a way, like a black metal flick in a way. Like a yeah. Lifetime movie. It was <laughs> I can, very, I can see that. it was very <laughs> cheesy and corny, and I was like, wow, this is this is entertaining. It was just more entertaining. Just feel like it was. It should have been more educational in a way. I I, I don't know. I I liked it that like it's sort of because when I was a kid and I just had this book and all these rumors about these church burnings, it seemed a lot more scarier, a lot more mysterious. When at the end of the day, it was like a bunch of like nerdy dudes in yep. a black metal yeah. band. So it's sort of like more truer. I don't know. It's just funny. That made yeah. Barg Barg was a poser the entire time trying to fit in, and I love that with the scorpion. And then Euronymous <laughs> was just like. This like innocent nice guy, and I was like, eh, well, something doesn't seem right. But I'm like, eh, whatever. Mm. I like that they did portray Euronymous as kind of a douche too, though. Like he <laughs> was taking when you know when after the first murder happened with Faust, he was like, yeah, you did that because I said it'd be cool, and he, he was taking credit for everything. So he was a dick. So they they then, kind of then like got he both converted sides. and changed at the end. And he was a horrible fucking businessman with Helvet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what pissed me off. We need some business skills in the black metals. <laughs> yeah, it was just very cheesy. But the chocolate milk thing, that just, that did me there. Yeah. What I, was I the chocolate love... milk thing? So um, it was when Vark came in and he's like about to kill your arm. I think he stabbed him already or whatever. But he's yeah. he's like struggling to like leave and trying to get his keys. And then Vark's just making this chocolate milk. Yeah, spoilers, <laughs> by the way, if you haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah. And then drinks he it died. very slowly, <laughs> yeah. and then then your is still like looking for keys to try to get out, and I'm yeah. like, that, that I love that scene. And he's just 
Was it Nesquik or was it like no, Hershey's like, syrup? I guess or? their version. Okay. Their Norwegian version. <laughs> I forgot what the name was. But then like all the gore was funny. Even the killing was funny. Like this this one guy like got stabbed like five thousand times and he's still talking like we're cool, man, we're cool, man. Like he's just I'm like, you just got stabbed like multiple times, are you just like talking and acting like you're okay? So it was just like funny i guess cheesy funny it's probably what happens in jail with like sharpened tooth we're, we're cool Versus, man we're cool, no, we're cool. like he's <laughs> yeah it's like yeah, and then they're still talking while he's still being stabbed and i was like what the hell is going on i don't think that's how it works but i'm like all I'm right i'm glad you guys mentioned that because that was the last that was, i had like one last thing i'm like we're forgetting something before we end this up i wanted to know what you guys thought of the movie yeah. I and mean, it was entertaining but i might just yeah. feel i should have been more focused and, and educational and and I brought up all the other bands like Bear Throne, Emperor, and all these other bands. Yeah, that, that would work. be good. Yeah, like have you, more. Have you guys heard of Heavy Trip? Mm mm. That shit is so a funny. A trip? It, it's so funny. <laughs> it, no, well, well, yeah, I was like, what the kind of a fucking name is that? But I guess it's like, it's on, uh, I think, Amazon Prime. But I saw it a year ago. It's a movie made in Norway. Like, the whole thing is, or no, it's made in Finland, and it's like the whole movie's in Finnish. I'm like, this looks so fucking goofy because it's just about a band trying to make it to the hugest metal festival in Norwegian in in Norway, and they're just like, we got to get the shittiest van. We get it, and it's it's just I don't know. It's kind of like the w- best way I could describe it, like Lords of Chaos mixed with like Dumb and Dumber. Actually, oh. I think I saw the trailer for this. Yeah, yeah. it looked good. It's on Netflix. He said. It, I, I thought it was on Amazon Prime, oh, okay. possibly, but it, it just the the, the most like frustrating thing was like how many goofy scenes are in it and trying to keep up with the subtitles while watching this you know but uh, maybe i've seen it oh, i suck with i suck with titles and names i even mm. forget my own friends i'm like what who, <laughs> who are you again i probably will get dementia soon i'm pretty sure yeah. oh, do you remember watching a movie in finnish does that ring any bells <laughs> how do you do that <laughs> subtitles subtitles <laughs> But no, I'm usually blind and can't see the. I'm like reading. I'm like, well, I'm not done reading. <laughs> Fuck. Um, so maybe you haven't seen it. I feel like it would stick out like goofy, silly finish. Probably. I probably have not. Then I'd That's what sticks out in your world? Goofy, silly finish? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of finish. Yep. <laughs> oh, good. That, wasn't that, was that good? Perfect, yeah. All right. Um, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you guys, we'll, we plugged your show. June yeah. 2nd at Reggie's June joint. June 2nd. Reggie's music joint. We are opening it, um, so get there early, 7 p.m. When doors are open, and I'll start screaming at some point <laughs> after that. Buy our CD. Yep. <laughs> Buy the yeah, CD. Yeah, we'll have. We only have 26 copies. They will not be ever made again. Ooh. So and listen to it on Spotify. It's gonna on be it's over gonna, and over. It's again. gonna be <laughs> rare and worth like thousands of dollars in the future when we like die or murder That's each right. other at some point. <laughs> it's bound to happen. Just, it's gonna happen. I Falls. ran out of bones, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Someone has to volunteer. Yes, no, I'm oh, yeah. joking. So, do you have a website? You're on Spotify. We're, We're on Band Spotify, Bandcamp Band Camp as well. So it's Matiana Official, Facebook. Yeah. How do you uh, spell Matiana? Uh, iTunes. We're on Google Music. We're everywhere. Yeah, if we're, you use literally, if everywhere. you use Google our name, you'll see all these like. Um, other people's like websites that we're in as well. We have a few other interviews that you'll find there. So just Google our name and go cr- wild crazy if you want to fucking read my gigantic fucking interview because I talk way too goddamn much. But this was the best interview you've been on yet, right? Yes. Thank you. Thank yes, you. it was very very entertaining. I mean, like, I, I I I like talking. I guess sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. And sometimes. we like listening. <laughs> we good. Yeah. So Better. for the dumb people like me, how do you spell Matiana? M A T I N A K. So K is silence. Matiana. Okay. Got you. Perfect. Yeah. Pronounce it that way. Yeah. So I'm going Ma-ti- to, and I feel like I've been doing a good job. Matiana. Matiana. And there you have it. Any final thoughts from you or Taylor or Adam? Go to the show. Yeah. Yeah. Kay. Go support us. We don't play often. And uh, it'll be worth it. Will it be worth it? I I believe it. You will get goosebumps, and if you don't, I'll make sure you do. <laughs> and you might start a fire too, so <laughs> that'll be fun I, to I, see. I might accidentally start a fire with my mic stand again. Yeah, the mic stand might fall over. It's, There's gonna be a lot of bones. It's gonna be chaos and be like, ah! and is just, that is that the new scream that you're gonna no. do? No, <laughs> you still have to come. <laughs> Fair enough. Ghoulish, goofyish, goofy finish. finish. Yes. Okay. So. 
On behalf of Phil and myself, thank you to everyone listening. Thank you so much, Matiana, for joining us. Thank, thank you, Maria, for hanging out in the back and being a good listener. Uh, you can find our podcast on all of those sources that Adam listed off. So just rewind and listen to what he said. We're there. Or Google it. Or Google it. Do, do whatever you want. I don't really care. Mm-hmm. Um, we're here for you whenever you need us. Thanks so much for tuning in. Phil, anything else? Nope. Finish. Done. <laughs> thank you. And a bear, 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 a bear